What is up everybody? Uh, wonderful afternoon to you all if you are in Europe or uh, great morning or evening. Um, so today I'm going to tell you something super cool that you don't hear a lot because you need to have suffered for this. Uh, this is how to improve the chances of getting good reviewers um, or reviewers that are sympathetic to your paper, reviewers that uh, will likely to give you a chance of revise and resubmit. There are actually things that you can do. It is not random. So there's actually there are actually things that you can do to improve the chances of getting good reviewers. And I'm going to share with you the three most important ones that I have learned uh, through my experience. And that, um, you know, uh, and that I use for every single paper. OK, first, journal target. OK, you need to target journals that that have either published um, on your topic or that have published on your data. OK, and for me, it is more important to find journals that publish on your data than on your topic. Meaning the first, the, the first obvious one is, you know, there are journals that don't publish qualitative data. There are journals that, surprise, surprise, don't publish a lot of quantitative data, like um, organization studies is, is one of them. Right, so you want journals that publish uh, the, the type of data that you publish. But also, for example, you know, in a recent paper that I've had a, a really rough time getting uh, revised and resubmit, I eventually got it. Um, you know, I basically found out that nobody publishes on volunteers, nobody in, in the management field. I know there's, there's plenty of journals on volunteering, but you know, like the main journals in the management field, they don't publish on, uh, on volunteer data. So I, I got a lot of even desk rejections saying, you know, the volunteer data is just, you know, is not generalizable. I'm like, okay, I mean, these people work in an organization, but that is fine. So. So you, you, you need to look for this, you know, you need to go to the journal page and or, you know, you need to go to Google Scholar, look at, uh, you know, type in volunteer management and look at the management journals that that are there. And that's where you need to submit. And, you know, I found out that from the list that my school uses to evaluate research, basically only one journal, <laughs> one the one journal publishes uh, about volunteers. So I did get the revise and resubmit uh, in that journal, okay? Now, the other thing is that, and, and this is, you know, this is the gorilla, right? This is like the, the, you know, something very special, which is sometimes when you, you want to publish in a field where um, you know there's there's canon, meaning that there is a specific type of type of paper that people are publishing in that field. So, for example, I have a, a paper on a field you know, called knowledge hiding that uh, was rejected from a management journal because um, knowledge hiding is all done on experiments. Everything in knowledge hiding is experiments, and I have ethnographic data, so no. So what did I do? Submit that to an IS journal. Why? Because an IS journal won't send this paper for, you know, human resources, the human resources scholars that, um, you know, they don't even like know, right? The human uh, the scholars that uh, are working on this topic. So, you know, I'll get more sort of like general management people that will be more open to ethnographic uh, data for this specific topic. OK, um, other topics that are um, known uh, known for this are, um, you know, uh, goal setting, for example, goal setting theory uh, is a really tough topic to publish in. So you may want to send this, for example, instead of a HR journal to an IS journal. If you're, you know, publishing on, on topics that are canon in, in IS, so for example, uh, social materiality, you know, you may want to send this to a, an HR journal where this is, you know, something that is newer 
and uh, not seen that often. And, uh, you know, again, you can get reviewers that, you know, are more open to different perspectives on social materiality. Okay, so that's the first one. What is your journal target? And here it's not like, you know, journals in, in, in specific topics, but, the, you know, just change the entire field of the journal. Okay. Second, choice of framing. Okay, so um, some topics are very difficult to publish. One is, uh, is control, for example. Um, other one is uh, change management, publishing well. So when you frame your research, you know, just make sure that you frame it away from topics where it's difficult to publish or again, where there is canon, right? So for example, my transfiguration paper, it started as a social materiality piece, but uh, that tried to bring some innovation to social materiality. So I was hammered. Um, so what I did then was uh, I changed that paper into a paper about, you know, performance data and so on. There's still a social materiality argument there with, uh, where I use this practice artifact chain idea, but it is no longer a paper about social materiality. So it just doesn't go to the social materiality reviewers, which would punish me for, you know, being a little bit uh, outside the box. Okay. Uh, my work science uh, piece was originally a goal setting piece, but then, you know, I was told in formal reviews, look, I mean, goal setting is, you know, there's a hard canon. There's no way they're going to publish this or accept this as reviewers. So we just framed it as a, as an ethics, uh, uh, an ethics piece, right? So as tempting as it may be to like frame this in, into this like core discussions, like routines and so on in management research, just be mindful that, you know, some of this, of the groups of scholars that work in these communities are, you know, not the most open to new ideas about their papers, to um, papers arguing from major gaps in their field. And so you may want to frame it uh, uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit different. Okay. So the right framing will make sure that you don't get hostile uh, reviewers. Okay. Finally, reviewer selection. Please select reviewers. Please select associate editors and senior editors if you are given the chance. If you are not given the chance, I would still put reviewer suggestions and editor suggestions in the in the letter when you submit the, the paper. So when you submit the paper, you can you can attach a letter to the editor. Several uh, journals um, actually tell you what you need to say in the letter, but they don't tell you that you can only say what they tell you to say. You can say more things. So I always like write something nice about the paper and and, and do a, like a, a micro abstract and explain how it uh, joins other discussions in the in the journal. But I always name editors and reviewers. Okay. So for the editor, for me, what matters is method. Okay. I don't want an editor, you know, and, and this has happened recently uh, because I didn't get the editor that I chose saying that qualitative data is not generalizable. I mean, you know, as a qualitative research in management now, you are entitled not to fight on on methods. Qualitative research is an accepted and powerful method for management research. We should not have to fight fights that quantitative researchers don't fight. Okay. So unfortunately we, we still do. Um, so just make sure that, you know, your senior editor, associate editor is a qualitative researcher. Okay. Um, now, uh, try to have one that is as close to your, um, uh, specific method as possible, you know, because, um, you know, people that, I mean, there are great associate editors and senior editors, and I've worked, for example, with uh, editors that are, that took grounded theory that were super open to my own, um, qualitative methods that are not, uh, that do not follow ground theory are different from ground theory. Um, but sometimes, you know, people that are, for example, into ground theory will, be less open to other methods and peoples that are in ethnography just want things a little bit richer than what the ground theory often uh, presents. So 
that, okay? So senior associate editor, you choose on, on methods, okay? That's what you do. Reviewers, you can choose on methods, but if you can, choose on data, okay? You want reviewers that have looked at data that is similar to yours. Because reviewers that have looked at data that is similar to yours, first, they value your data, they'll be interested by your data. So somebody that has studied salespeople in the past or um, performance reporting systems in the past, um, you know, are, are, are good people to, um, to, to have as reviewers because they'll be curious about the data that you have and they'll have a ton of ideas about what you can do to have a, a powerful frame, right? So for example, um, you know, somebody for me at MS Quarterly is uh, Nick Berente, right? So Nick Berente has all of this uh, fascinating work on, um, on, on, on reporting work that is very different from mine, but the, the empirics are essentially about reporting work, right? So he's, uh, he does, uh, you know, an, an institutional approach that I don't use. It's very alien to my topic, but it's the same data. So I, I you know, Obviously, when I submit something to my Quarterly, you know, I put Nick Verante on the on, on the list. Okay, do not, unless you have to or you know these people really well. Do I mean I'm not talking about obviously a friendship and corruption. I'm talking about uh, you know you know their research well enough that you know that they'll respond positively to 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 your uh, to your paper. Do not select reviewers that work on your topic because reviewers that work on your topic will have very strong opinions about your topic and are more likely to, you know, um, judge you, judge your first framing more severely and give you less opportunities to, 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 to change your framing. Uh, that has actually been my experience. Um, so be very careful of this. Okay, so um, just to wrap up, the three ways of improving your chances of getting good reviewers and, and, and positive reviewing decisions is um, choose a choice of journal. If you are doing something innovative in a field, choose a journal in a different field where you, you, you can introduce novelty with, a, with less uh, resistance. Uh, second, choice of framing. So there are frames where it's very difficult to, to publish because they have these sort of like very canonical uh, expectations for papers, social materiality, goals, goal setting theory, routines uh, are examples of this. So, you know, reframe your paper so that you don't have to uh, fight this uh, very strong uh, fields. Uh, third, reviewer selection select nominate reviewers even if you're not if the journal doesn't expect you to nominate reviewers nominate editors editors uh, nominate them on method reviewers nominate them on data okay um two points that i want to make uh before i let you let you go and, and do my delicious lunch first point i want to apologize for taking out the video from yesterday I'm going to re-record it and post it on YouTube. The reason I took it out is that when switching screens, my students grades were there and obviously these and, and, and names were visible. So this um, violates the privacy of my students. So I, I took the video down immediately uh, and I will uh, replace it. Um, tomorrow, I'll do a follow up on, the, on today's topic and uh, I'll discuss how to write um, the, your sort of opening letters, submission letters uh, for journals, okay? When you're submitting your, your paper to a journal. Okay, so I uh, thanks everybody for watching. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.